Okay guys, good morning. Volatile Fugitive here again. And as you can see, the interceptor is back after that crash. Yeah, so uh, right at the bat you can see that some things are different, a little different. The handlebars, for example. So let me take you through uh, all the things that had to be done, uh, all the damages from the crash that had to be fixed. Uh, so if you watch that uh, crash video, you would know that uh, I damaged my front brake lever, the rear brake pedal, and uh, the handlebar was bent. I mean, something with the handlebar was bent. Well, it looked like uh, it was the riser that was bent. Um, immediately after the accident. So, uh, let me do one thing. Let me stop somewhere and uh, show you all the things that uh, had to be replaced or repaired. All right, so the damages uh, were to the front brake lever, the brake pedal. Uh, some scratches on the uh, engine guard that you can see and uh, some minor dents and scratches on the exhaust. Um, now the exhaust of course I'm not going to do anything, it can't be repaired and I'm not going to replace it because it's quite expensive and these damages are quite minor. The engine guard, that's going to stay there for now, it's just uh, cosmetic. Um, yeah, so the things I had to replace, I replaced the brake pedal and I also wanted to replace the brake lever because because if you saw the accident video you would know that uh, it got bent inwards and uh, I wasn't able to fully apply the brakes because the lever was touching the handlebar. Um, the brake lever was not available. Uh, it's not in stock for a long time. Uh, so somehow I managed to just hammer this one, the damaged one, back into shape. And uh, it's not perfect, but it's uh, pretty good. It's uh, definitely usable. Um, so yeah, those are the brakes. Uh, what else did I change? Oh yes, uh, for the handlebars, uh, this lower part of the riser, you know, the original riser where the handlebar mounted, that part was visibly bent. The upper part was fine, uh, so I replaced that, the lower part. And uh, if you remember, I also had some additional spacers here um, to raise the stock handlebars even higher. And I wasn't sure if those were bent, but that's unlikely because those are like, you know, big blocks of metal which shouldn't bend. And uh, so, <clears throat> so yeah, I got the replacement uh, right at the lower part. And even with that replaced, somehow something was not right, you know. When I was riding, I mean, just at standstill, you couldn't really tell. But when I was riding, uh, it did not really feel right. At uh, relatively higher speeds, you know. I would have uh, the bike going straight, but the handlebar would feel slightly bent to the right. Slightly. It was almost like it wasn't visible, but I could feel it. You know? So, I wasn't sure what to do, what could be damaged, because there are so many different components here, right, that uh, could be causing that. 
but I found out uh, one common reason for that could be that the forks are misaligned. Now forks rarely bend unless you have a big crash, but they do get misaligned very easily uh, when you drop the bike. So it's basically like you have these two forks, right? And when they're straight, they're supposed to be like this, but they can get misaligned like this or like this. And that's pretty common. So that's an easy fix. Uh, there are plenty of videos on YouTube. You can uh, look out for them if you are curious. But that's an easy fix. So I did that. And uh, that solved the problem to a large extent, but uh, not completely. It was still feeling a little off when I was riding, you know. Still felt like the handlebars were pointing a little to the right, uh, even when I was going straight. And it was only noticeable at speeds of around 100 or above. Um, so, yeah, I was kind of, you know, disappointed. I wasn't sure what to do next. Um, at that point, I had my stock handlebars mounted on the original riser. I did not have the spacers installed because, you know, I uh, just wanted to eliminate that as a possibility. So, with that, um, I knew that the risers were fine because those were replaced. Um, the next thing could be the handlebar itself or uh, this upper part of the triple clamp. And that is very unlikely to bend because that's a huge, you know, very thick block of steel and uh, that should be very hard to bend. So what could it be? Um, the handlebar? Um, well, visually I could not uh, see anything wrong with it. I could not see that it was bent anywhere. Uh, so I saw one video on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description and also in the, uh, you know, the top right corner uh, card there. Uh, it's a video from Del Boy's garage and he talks about how to check for bends in handlebars if you're suspecting that. Uh, well, unfortunately, that requires you to remove the handlebar completely and strip it of all the various controls, I mean, mirrors, controls and everything, and even the uh, grips. So once it's stripped of everything and it's just the bare handlebar, you can, you know, put it on a flat surface and if you can imagine how that would work yeah so that's how it works and otherwise just go uh, see Del Boy's uh, video um, so there I could tell that my handlebar was slightly bent it was a slightly it wasn't really much it wasn't uh, enough to notice visibly but uh, when you put it down on a flat surface, you could see that, you know, it was not straight. So, yeah, not much, but enough to be felt. So, then uh, I knew for sure that I had to replace the handlebars. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what to do. I mean, I could get the stock handlebar. Wouldn't be cheap, but yeah, probably wouldn't be very expensive either. I don't, I don't know how much it costs. I did not check. Uh, but the thing is, with the uh, stroke handlebars, I would have to mount it on those uh, spacers because the stock height is uh, too low for me. Um, and I wasn't sure if the spacers were, all, were also damaged. Unlikely, but maybe they were also damaged. So in that case, I would get, have to get the handlebars and the spacers. Uh, uh, and that would just uh, be an additional cost. So then I started looking for alternative uh, handlebars, aftermarket handlebars. And this one from the Art of Motorcycles, uh, it's a small uh, Bangalore-based uh, company. This one's pretty popular in India for interceptors. And uh, so uh, I went for that. I mean, it looks like uh, one that would solve my problems with the stock handlebar. I mean, it's high enough by itself, so I wouldn't need any additional risers or spacers. Uh, and it's also a little wider, so it gives you better um, controllability. So, uh, 
um, and uh, you know, I think it's a cheap, well, let's say inexpensive aftermarket uh, products. You have to be careful about quality. And since this one is quite popular, a lot of people have used them and uh, they've had good experiences with it. So I knew that quality would be good. And it was, uh, you know, quite inexpensive. So I went with this, the auto motorcycles uh, handlebar. And I installed it and everything was fine. Um, no more bends. Uh, I mean, it felt fine. It, went straight, it did not feel like uh, something was off with the handlebars. I'll do a separate review uh, or video about the handlebar, the auto motorcycles uh, handlebar later, once I've used it for a while, but uh, first impressions uh, in terms of the uh, riding position, it feels pretty much the same as the uh, stop handlebars that I had mounted on those uh, additional uh, uh, spacers. It's about the same height, so your riding uh, position is almost the same. It's a bit wider, uh, but you can't really feel it. Uh, at least I can't uh, really feel it. And uh, yeah, one thing I definitely noticed, uh, the seat back of the handlebar um, is not as much as the uh, stop handlebars. You know, these are more straight. Um, so, it gives me a little discomfort sometimes uh, when I'm riding for longer periods. Um, but I think it's just something I have to get used to. What I meant by the sweet back was, uh, you know, the stop handlebars had more of a, this kind of angle, you know, the sweep back a little more, but these are more straight, so that's what I meant. And otherwise, uh, yeah, you know, makes me wonder if I could mount this uh, handlebar on the uh, riser, uh, the spacers that I had, or any kind of, uh, you know, higher risers, that would make the riding posture really comfortable. Because I'm kind of used to riding with uh, handlebars that are, that are on chest height, when you're sitting completely upright and the handlebars are at their own chest height because I had been riding that uh, Harley Sports there for such a long time and uh, that was like that. Uh, and I think most adventure motorcycles are also like that. Um, you know, where you have an upright sitting posture and uh, the handlebars would be around, around chest height for you. Uh, so yeah, I would like to achieve uh, that kind of uh, posture, but the problem is, uh, if I mount these on additional uh, risers or spacers, I would need to change uh, the cables, uh, you know, all the electrical cables, the control cables, uh, the brake holes, and so on. And it would probably look really bad. So what else? Oh yeah, the root cause of the crash, if you remember, my brake sticking, the front brakes. Uh, so what I did was, uh, I took off the caliper and uh, completely dismantled it, you know. Um, 
I noticed that, I, I, well at first I thought let's just try replacing the brake pads, maybe, maybe because uh, the pads were somehow unevenly worn and they were sticking. But when I was trying to put in the replacement pads, I noticed that one of the pistons wasn't really going back inside the cylinder. So I thought maybe some dirt might have gone in or it might have started corroding. Um, so why not just try dismantling it completely, uh, clean it up, you know, and do a fresh uh, rebuild and see how that goes. So I did that and when I was doing that I noticed that the sliding pins, you know, uh, that make the caliper float and kind of uh, follow the disc, the rotor, those sliding pins were not moving freely. You know, they were kind of getting stuck at places. So I figured that might be the reason. Uh, so I took them off, uh, cleaned them up thoroughly, uh, re-greased them. And when I put them back together, they were moving much better, you know. I mean, completely freely, they're not getting stuck anywhere. So I suspect that would be the reason what uh, caused uh, my brakes to bind. And after I uh, reassembled uh, the caliper and put it back on, uh, fortunately, I haven't had that issue happen again. The brakes are working fine. I'm still on the uh, old uh, brake pads, I didn't have to replace them. So yeah, uh, looks like that was the reason. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all pretty much. It's up is back in service uh, with a few minor changes, enhancements. Yeah, I would call the handlebar a bit of an enhancement. And uh, this brake lever, it's working fine. I don't really need to replace it just yet, uh, except that it's got a lot of scratches. Uh, from the drop and from the hammering so it's looking a little bad but it's okay the lever is cheap but you know i gotta uh, head out to uh, the royal enfield uh, not the dealer the thoughts distributor for bangalore because the dealers are very reluctant to sell you spares uh, parts Unless you're getting uh, the entire work done, uh, done with them. And, uh, you know, last time I checked, it wasn't in stock anyway, uh, uh, with the distributor. So, that's all I have for now, guys. Uh, catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.